Now let me see if I could get one falling here to kind of show you. And I will still, oh, I stole the zombie. That's not what I meant to do. What is up YouTube? My name is Enigma Red and this is a tutorial video on how zombies falling really works. So let's find out why these little suckers fall. And if you can already kind of see what's happening there, I'm holding the barrier block. This is a new snapshot feature and that is where all the magic happens. See what happens is a whole bunch of barrier blocks get summoned or set right above and one by one, they each get removed underneath the zombie, creating this really cool effect. Now, the, the blocks are actually really cool because they cannot be destroyed in adventure or survival mode unless you're using command blocks. So, I will jump right into what's going on in the innards of this game here. Oh, fell too much. Gotta watch out there for that hole. So, you'll see that the redstones are triggered here on top of these glowstones. That's really just a reference point so you kind of can tell where it's coming. And these are blocks that sort of just, they're set blocks. This is basically, this game is very set block heavy and it uses relative coordinates for almost every coordinate in this game. Now, this here, this little squiggly line right here is called a tilde. Now the tilde is, in this, it's used as a reference or a relative coordinate. So this is not negative Z in the world. Negative Z6 in the world. This is negative 6 from where this block is. So on the Z axis, negative 6 on the Z axis from this block which happens to be right on that one. And then eventually once it gets there, it clears the redstone so that another one can be placed and the signal can go through. Because if you just keep placing them on top of one another and the signal doesn't clear, you sort of have a mess. So let's get right to what's happening. Over here, one of five lines, you'll see that the time is up so the signals won't be going through anymore. You'll see that there's a whole nother line of command blocks. This is another set block, a line of set block commands, sort of like an array. And the set block command is really just putting a barrier inside of the um, command that's triggering it 15 on the Y axis straight up, which is really just right up there. That's what the zombies are. You can see that there's a little hole to, for the reference point. And if you come, let's go a couple down, you'll see that, all right, this one is five blocks over. It happens to be 20 blocks up on the Y axis, but the offset is five blocks on the negative Z axis because it has to have an offset in order to line up in a line unless you're making a line horizontally, which you wouldn't have to do that if that's the case. But this is also a barrier. They're all barriers all day long over here. Last one is 44. So if you see... The offset there shows you basically how many of these you got. So you got basically 30 blocks, and the 30 blocks there is really the offset that the the, the barriers that the zombies the zombie is gonna sit on top of. And here that little sucker goes right here is on the 45th block, which happens to be reserved for the zombie himself. Now, this is a summon command. If you're not familiar with summon commands, it's it's pretty straightforward. You got the zombie, has to be capital. That's very important. And this is also, again, it's just relative, so it uses the tilde. And really the most, oh, no one didn't mean to do that. So the most important thing here, aside from the zombie being summoning, is the heal F little data tag that's in here. Now that data tag just really means that the one represents a half of a heart. So that zombie, when he summons, he's pretty weak. Which is why when you kill, when you shoot him with one arrow, it kills him right there. You don't have to shoot him a couple of times as he's falling. That would be a lot harder. Also, maybe for another level or something. For some reason, the zombies always face south. Not sure if it's in this game or all across worlds. 
That I have to look into, but I will say that here they were summoning south, so I had to put a rotation on them, 180 degrees, so they would face north. So you'd be looking at them instead of the back of their heads. Now F really just means that that's what they're that's what they're facing. Now that's cool, but when I put that in, it didn't seem to do the trick. So what I had to do was put motion. Now the motion actually gives them the motion in order to do the rotation itself. That's cool, but there's another command block here that I don't know what's going on. So, oh, this is a set block. So the set block, basically, if you can see there, right here, that is negative 35 on the Y axis. So that's got to be straight down here. And I've done the same thing that I did above. I basically put a glowstone so you can really see what where the redstone is going to end up. So it gets confusing if you don't actually have some kind of reference block. Oh, I actually need a redstone to make this work. So I'm going to grab a redstone, put it there, and I'll show you what happens. Now, it gets cleared, but really important is you can see the signals going down here, really delayed. Now, that is where this, the command blocks are triggered to there, Minecraft Air. So every single block that was placed gets removed, but it doesn't just get removed all at once that would sort of make him fall at the regular rate so what I did was I just put a little bit of a delay and that's why this is really so big is because you kind of have to put a lot of these in order to make it work that way each one of these repeaters are set to two ticks now the two ticks is just what I found works because when I put them all to four ticks it went really really slow even three ticks was a little slow but it was it wasn't that interesting that's pretty much the basics of what makes this whole game work but zombies are pretty stupid so they don't know when to go they don't know when to summon they don't know what to do that's why I have to have this little square array of pistons glass blocks and one one golden excuse me golden block because that golden block basically is what triggers each command block individually without them all being triggered at the same time so if you can see the pistons are at work they're doing their their magic there all these are rotating the timing is such that they all go in a circle and nothing really throws off now the glass blocks, the beauty of it is that it does not transmit a signal, so nowhere you can see the signal going up except on the gold block. Gold block, why did I use it? Really just for contrast. It stands out amongst the other blocks, and that's really the only reason why I used it. So, what do these command blocks have in them? That is a good question. If you look over here, you'll see that there are numbers underneath all of them. One, three, where do you find those numbers? What do they mean? Well, look, if you see here, one, two, three, four, five, and at the moment you can also see the redstones being set right above them. So that is just really just a note for me, so I know where all of these are going to end up. Set blocks are limited to the distance in which you can set a block, which is why I had to come up with this whole little chicken cage, glass cage setup here. Now, if you look here, it says teleports chicken outside of the map to clear the cage that is something I'll get into in a little bit but I'll go over here and show you what's happening now whenever you try to set a block in a distant distant part of the map that is out of the range of the set block it'll give you a warning something like uh, cannot set block outside of world see that I have a little test button down here I will press and if you look up in the glass cage, you can see that a little chicken, right in the corner, a little chicken gets created, summoned, and then he goes right away. That's because he's teleported to a tripwire little setup that brings everybody into the world. And I'll show you that in just a second. This was my solution to not being able to set a block too far in the world. I had to summon a chicken. You can see here. Uh, you can see a lot better here. See, it's, it sets up. That's actually, this actually will start the game. So this one will actually, uh, on, if you go, if I go back over to the platform, you'll see the game is starting. The zombies are falling and everything. Or at this point, maybe the time is clicking. 
Now, this sends, because you could teleport way farther than you can set a block. So that was really my solution, is to just teleport a chicken. But because I don't want chickens kind of floating around here, I made a little glass cage for them. And the button that I pressed on the platform there summoned the chicken, and it brought him to this one. See, this one over here, this start game chicken trigger, right? This is what starts the game. So when you're at the end of the game, it automatically sets up and sends the chicken over here. And this is the end game chicken trigger. So that is how that works. And because I cannot have chickens flying all around my map, I had to do this here. Teleport entity. This is a selector you can see down here. Type chicken has to be uppercase C. Very important. Relative command 30 blocks on the Z axis, which is somewhere in that area there. And that basically just flings that chicken right out and he just drops all the way down till he is no more. He just disappears. Uh, I could have just done a kill command, but this is just way funnier. So that is, uh, anytime it's funny, I just, uh, yeah, I have to do it. So that's pretty much that. That was my solution for that. And this basically is just a bunch of commands that set up the end of the game. This is the message that you see at the end. It says, well, you can't see it here for some reason, but let me see if I go down. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's a little error. But you can see it says reset engage there. That must be an error in the snapshot. This is actually 14W30C. And that's where it says reset engage. This just lets you know that, you know, if you press that reset in the actual game, it'll basically come over here, throw another chicken in here and gets the whole game going again. And that is pretty much all there is to it. There are some other little pieces of this, but I won't get into that in this game or this tutorial rather. But next time I'm going to get into all that and sort of show you the little pieces but as an individual tutorial to solve certain problems because this is pretty much the the basics of this and the rest of them is not that important if you kind of poke around the download which there will be a download below you can kind of get the, the gist of what's going on and any questions you can put below please subscribe and I will have a lot more coming soon thank you for watching